Hello and welcome to another maths video. Uh, we're going to look today at reviewing data displays, power value 10, 5.3 unit, um, looking at single variable and bivariate statistics. So this unit does cover a lot of ground because it is revision, uh, so I'm not going to cover it all in this video. I'm going to assume you guys know a few bits and pieces. So if you don't, if you're having a struggle, uh, make sure you get onto your textbook, make sure you go back over previous year's notes. I'm going to assume you are good with the following. Stem and leaf plots. Stem and leaf. I hope you guys know from last year, or from year eight, I think it is even. Uh, next, I'm gonna assume you guys are good with um, dot plots as well. And really, you guys should be okay with your frequency distribution tables. Um, just to point out what these are, what these look like. So frequency distribution tables, you've normally got score, you've got um, a frequency, table, frequency column, then you've got a cumulative frequency maybe, and you can put other columns in here as well. So what you'd be saying here, if I just finish this table up nice and quickly, uh, if I have a score of say 6, 7, 8 and 9, a frequency of 1, 4, 2 and 1. So it's saying that a score of 6 has occurred one time, a score of 7 has occurred, occurred four times, so 7, 7, 7 and 7. Uh, 8 happened twice, 8 and 8, and 1, 9 has occurred. Cumulative frequency, add the frequency as you go, so here cumulative frequency is 1, then it's 5, then it's seven, then it's eight. So in total, eight people have been surveyed here. This is for ungrouped data. So each of my scores gets its own row. Score of six gets its own row. Score of seven gets its own row. Score of eight and nine all get their own rows. This is great for discrete data. So discrete data, it can be a six, you can be a seven, you can be an eight, you can be a nine. Um, there's no classes in there, there's no kind of range, there's no 6.34, etc. You'll see this, this is for ungrouped, you'll also see one for grouped. Uh, grouped does change to class here. You do have the frequency again. Uh, you've also got the uh, cumulative frequency. Other columns here you'll see will be the class center as well. So class center. And that is the middle of the class, the average of the class. So if you have classes, so say you are doing um, height, for example, there's going to be a big range of heights. So for height, you might not want to go score, 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 because if you get a height of 178, you might get one person being that. 179, one person. 180, zero people. 181, one person. You might want to group it up just to make your graphs a little bit easier. Uh, make your data a little bit nicer. So class here, you might say a class of 170 up to 179, then 180 up to 189, and then 190 to 199. So the class here, anyone who has a height in that range will be part of that class. So it might be three, two, and let's say four people are quite tall. Um, cumulative frequency, so just going through your columns here, same as before, add the frequency as you go, so it's 3, it's 5, it's 9. The class center is the middle of the class, so you find these two scores here, average them. Okay, it's not 175 here. To average these two, 174.5. Okay, this one here is going to be 184.5 and 190, sorry, 194.5. There's this difference there for the group data. Of course, groups, group and class, same thing there, going together. You can have a total column down the bottom as well. I will add on the uh, subject of class, sometimes you will see a notation that looks like this. You might see 170, up to less than 180, and the next column or the next row will say 
180 up to less than 190. This is really allowing for decimals. So here, if you um, round, if you round to the nearest centimeter, 170 is fine. 179 is fine as well. 179.5 though would get lost in here. 179.5 would be in between these two. Okay, so you have to round, um, and depending on how you round, if it's just above 179.5, it'll be in 180. But if you get 179.4, for example, that would be in this top column here. This notation up the top says you'll take 170 up to everything less than 180. So you'll take 179.99999 in this category, but 180 then flips down to this category here. So up to, but not including 180, 180 uh, will be in this one here. So 179.9999. Uh, that is a little bit of a difference. There's also a little bit of a difference in terms of um, your graphing. So if you are drawing uh, histograms and polygons, or histograms and polygons, again, revision. The histogram, just quickly, was your column graph. And your column graph, a few pointers on that. Sorry, it's crooked. Um, this is going to be frequency up here. This is going to be your scores. So for ungrouped, you'll have the actual score in the middle. It should be in the middle of the column. So it would be 6 here, then 7 here, 8 in the middle of the next column. Um, and your polygon will go to the middle of the column. Okay, and then it has to finish back down at 0. So end up here at 10, at 0, wherever that goes to. For grouped, you'll have the class center down the bottom. So for grouped, if you're drawing again for grouped, try and make it a bit straighter. It's a little bit hard on a computer. So my columns here, again, for both my graphs, half a column space at the start. So the graph does not necessarily match the data above, which kind of drawing them freehand. This is not very good because these should be equally wide. So if I was drawing it on paper in exam, certainly equally wide. Uh, you can do it with your grid books nicely. Um, but down the bottom here goes the class center. So the class center here, 174.5. And class center here, 184.5. The textbook, I don't believe, follows this exactly, but it should be the class center there down the bottom. Um, and so down the bottom here we have class centers. And we're graphing it against frequency. They are technical graphs. Make sure your histogram, histogram, column graph, uh, no spaces, all the same color, equal width, half column space at the start. The polygon, which is the line graph, middle of the columns. Okay, so the score is literally above here, six would be literally right above seven where it intersects there as well. The last thing we've got to look at as we look at this subtopic, uh, the review of data displays, is skew. And skew is actually a little bit of a new idea. Um, so skew. And skew is based on the idea of a normal distribution, which we'll talk more about when we do standard deviation. We assume most data has a symmetrical shape to it. So this here is symmetrical. So symmetrical, borrowing from our primary school definitions, if you cut it in two, down the middle here, um, this side here is the same as this side here, but flipped over. So they are, they are sym symmetrical. In terms of skew, um, skew is when data is not symmetrical. So there's, there are two types of skew. If I draw two symmetrical graphs here, Let's assume these are symmetrical, so they're slightly out. Um, and what I mean, the reason most data is symmetrical is because if you do take height, most people will be around a standard height here. A few guys are very tall, but not very many. A few guys are very short, but not very many. Uh, so most of our data is symmetrical. In terms of skew, skew has to do with a tail. So this is normal, this is normal, 
and the proper name for it is actually a normal distribution, which is convenient. A tail is going to be when the data doesn't quite follow, so when there is some sort of effect where the data is dragging down one end. So here the data is dragging, this here would call a tail, and this here would be a um, negative. Skew. And as you probably guess, this one here, the tail, is kind of up here. This would be a that's the tail there, that's gonna be a positive skew. Okay, so negative skew, positive skew. Um, you can remember from the diagrams, so diagrams will be a good way to remember. Uh, otherwise, you can kind of take it as if you've got a guy standing on top um, and he's on top of a hill. He can roll down this cliff shape here or he can roll down the nice hill. If he wants to roll down the nice hill it's toward the negative here. On this one here, the nice hill goes toward the positive. The tail there goes toward the positive. So it's positive skew in there. Uh, but if you base it off a normal distribution, throw those tails in, negative skew, positive skew. When you're asked to, to describe data, of course describe means use your words. Describe data using words, negative skew, positive skew, they're all words. Um, so you use those to describe, especially in this course because you've just learnt it. Um, otherwise guys, thanks for watching. Uh, there is quite a bit of work, like I said, on the earlier stuff, this different data types. Um, you also have to do column graphs, bar graphs as well. Quite a bit of it's revision. If you're in your 10.5.3, I assume you're kind of good with it. Um, just pick up on the key notes here. It would be fantastic. Um, thanks for watching and all the best with your graphing interpreting of displays.